Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern. As you can see there's a little bit of a change going on. And this video is about this change. So sit back and enjoy. Here we are back at Jarrow Road and to part four of building this station. We did quite well last week. We got the front and rear walls. Rear walls? Rear walls. Um, more or less up together. Um, still a lot more detailing to do on both faces of the walls, front and back. So this week we're going to concentrate on doing the steps and hopefully a little bit inside. So, let's get cracking. I'm going to use um, the old stairs as a guide to how I'm going to build the, the new set of stairs. Um, there's only eight stairs between the bottom of the door there, just in there, to the actual floor. So I've measured the width and I've cut a piece of card um, to act as a base. And I've also done a little bit of a sketch here so I know exactly, roughly, how I'm going to go with this. It's 31 millimeters from the inside of the door to the edge of the stairs going the other way. And in the stairs themselves are 13 millimeters wide onto the first landing, which is here. And then another three steps will take us into the station. Well, that's the cunning plan anyway. Moving along a little bit, as you can see, I'm down to the landing and four steps, or four stairs to the landing. And then all I've got to do now is put some card along that. So we have the steps running down this side and this side and there'll be a wall on the front face as it were. And that wall will help support the canopy as you'll see as we go along. So that's how it's looking so far. Um, obviously there'll be a backfill underneath so all that gap under there will have to be filled in with some other strips of card to make the stairs well solid base before I glue it into the um, station entrance. We've almost finished with these stairs. Um, they are quite a tight fit but it's a big improvement to what we had originally from that. So what I'm doing now is I'm just marking some slabs onto this landing here and hopefully when it's painted the black lines will come through and we'll see some slabs appearing so yeah and also I've added a one mil piece of card on the bottom which um, well solidifies the, the stairs as it were I'm now painting the stairs and the landings, if you like, in a sandstone colour, the same colour I used for the Saracen's head. And um, hopefully once this absorbs into the card, the black lines will come through and then I've just got to weather it down a little bit with a little bit of grey paint and maybe some weathering powder but um, as you can see the, the steps and the stairs and the landings coming through the paint while we're waiting for the paint to dry I might as well make a start on the inside walls so I've identified the two pieces of the card right and left um, so what I want to do now is mark out for the height of the ceiling. So obviously on this side this is going to be the booking hall 
and possibly the um, station master's office on this on this side and on this side I'm not sure what these rooms are going to be at the moment but uh, yeah so we've got two levels on this side and obviously this is the inside on the main hall so I'm just setting out for the landing which is 38 millimeters 38 38 and I'll mark a line and that's where the top of the landing is going to be so if I just bring this rear wall forward we can see where it's going to line up so it's like slots in there like so as you can see so this uh, balcony will follow the main uh, entrance hall all the way around but before I do that I need to mark out for a door to go here and two um, ticket hatches so you can buy the tickets so I shall mark that out and see where we go from there I was right about the space being very very tight inside the booking hall um, I've only got enough room for two ticket hatches uh, as I, as I will explain in a minute um, I've cut out for the door and you see this line here behind the that line on the other side is the ladies so hence how small this room is um, on the opposite side so two ticket hatches we'll cut these out and then we shall see what we got in the way of space I have put a couple of droplets of super glue into those um, arch pieces. I'll let that dry, and once that's hardened off, I'll be able to use a file and file them round. So we'll put that on one side for a minute. Now, the other wall is going to be a little bit more trickier because I've got stairs going up here to meet the landing that goes all the way around. So I've got to work out. Um, how to do the stairs. This is what I've come up with with these doors for the left hand wall. Um, there's just enough space to fit a door in there but I've had to make the stairs leading up to the landing uh, a right angle. It was virtu virtually impossible to have the stairs run up that wall which uh, yeah because we need a door here for the waiting room and uh, that's the line for the outside of the wall if that makes sense where we have the recess so if I just put, put in the outside wall here now you can see how tight it is fit everything in but it's going to look interesting once it's lit up however the right hand wall is a lot easier there's no stairs all I've got to do is run a landing along that pencil line uh, to meet up with this landing here uh, and it's job done um, yeah so the doors are just placed in there at the moment so I'll super glue those in this one will have glazing on the back but this one here I don't know if you can see it that one there I'll just stick a piece of white um, sheeting on there because obviously you don't want people nosing in into the uh, ticket office 
So we're getting there. It was all glued in. I just thought I'd show you um, what it looks like with these three walls together. Um, it's not glued together yet, but it's just uh, loosely, um, well, just standing there. Um, I had a comment from Ed Herring about using uh, this room here to the left as a refreshments room because that would be quite a big space I can fill that in with a load of tables, chairs and a counter um, may even put a radio on the counter if I can make one of them but uh, we're way off that yet, way off that yet so we have the refreshments room we have the station master's office there we have the ticket office if you like or the booking hall area and we have a waiting room there so that takes care of all the rooms for this station and uh, yeah so where do we go from here right I can't glue it together just yet because um, I want to add some wood panelling here around where we get the tickets from and the rest of it it's all got to be painted um, it's got to be painted before we put it together and also I've got to make a, a handrail and we're just going to go around this landing and head down the stairs and then open it up to the uh, wall there so yeah I couldn't put the front wall together because as you know if I did the front wall is 18 mil higher than the rest of these walls because these walls actually sit on the station floor as it were or on the platforms so this is where we are up to now um, so I'm going to have to do one wall at a time decorate it, paint it um, before we start gluing it together now that the super glue has gone off I can now file the card and get them radiuses sharp, nice and sharp, because they're a bit rough cut. And then I can do the same on that one. That's a good thing about super glue, it just kind of turns the card into plastic and you get the nice crisp edges once you've filed them. As you can see. Moving on a little bit, I have painted the four walls and then left them to dry and then now I have glued two sides together here and I've glued the other two sides together as well um, as you can see you can see now how tight it was to get the stairs in and I've still got the balustrade to add to the stairs but I can do that quite simply in situ but this just makes it a lot easier to handle now um, for doing the other little bits and pieces um, yeah so now we're um, looking into building the counter for the ticket office here so as you can see I've painted these as well stuck them together and what I'm doing is I'm making up a wooden panelling here two little counters and uh, gluing them and I'll put a wooden frame around there as well and then paint it in an oak colour so yeah so that should make it quite plain that, that this is where you get your your tickets from hopefully anyway so the ticket office is beginning to take shape um, all this here is made of card um, one mil card, 0 0.5 card, except for this corners here, which is a little bit of two mil quarter round, which just finishes off the top of the ticket office 
quite nicely it just looks like there's a cornice there right so the next thing to do although this is not quite finished yet there's still little bits of wood panelling I want to add to this but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the wood panelling all the way around the lower parts of the wall top and bottom and um, see what that looks like when it's done and this is what I'm going to be using for the wooden panelling it's 13 mil high 0.5 card by one mil strip card along the top so I'm just going to glue that in these areas here around the base of the walls top and bottom and once that's painted it'll look quite neat so let's get cracking I thought I'd show you how I'm doing the panelling I've decided to make it in long lengths it was taking too long to cut each individual card and stick it on the wall as one piece at a time but this seems to be working out a lot easier just by making them in long lengths like this and um, here's what we've done so far as you can see that's the upper floor with the wooden panelling along and the lower floor that's all done on this lower wall anyway but we've still got the other two walls left to do and I thought well while I'm gluing things to walls I have um, downloaded this little picture off the internet and shrunk it down to almost um, double L scale figure now this is Robert Stevenson and as the station is right next door to Stevenson's bank I thought I'd only be fitting to have him hanging up in the booking hall where I'm putting in the panelling I have to key the wall as it were because of the paint just to make sure that the glue takes I'm just putting some crosses into the walls as if a plasterer was uh, keying in the wall and then what I'll do is drop a glue and then spread the glue along where the panelling is going and that just gives it a good uh, adhesion because I just let that soak in and just put the panel in so only a few more bits to do that's the panelling done, uh, the ground floor and the first floor. So now we can paint the panels. Um, I've gone for a dark mahogany colour using matte 37, matte 33 and a clear gloss 35. Um, four parts, two parts and then two parts again. Because you want a little bit of a, a gloss in the in the paint, but not too much. Anyway, I'm using these uh, jam pots because once you finish with the paint, they seal quite tightly. And uh, yeah, I think I've had too many cream teas with Minuki Brown. <laughs> Sorry. Um, right, so let's just see what this looks like once it's painted on. I'm hoping for a really brown, reddish look. Yeah, I think, just on that one panel there, and I think that's what I'm looking for. So I shall continue, we'll see what it all looks like when it's done. Right, we're nearly there. Only a few more panels left to do. 
Um, as you probably notice as I'm painting this, I'm following the grain, so the panels, like the center panels there, I'm going up and down with the paint, and when I'm going across the tops there, I'm going that way. And once it's dry, you can see the brush strokes, which actually looks possibly look like wood grain, might not do, but uh, it's just a it's just a thought. Right, so on the community page, I had a little bit of a poll going to see what your favourites were, whether it was running sessions or the builds, and um, the the builds of, at the moment are a little bit on top at 72 percent so so a lot of you just prefer to watch me paint little bits of card like this which is great um, most of all uh, I do enjoy the comments and feedback that I get from you guys especially the railway guys who have um, helped me on and off when I've become stuck um, with ideas so yeah so I do appreciate all comments so keep the comments coming we're taking a break for a minute and having a look around St Hilda's Colliery reason being I'm looking for some inspiration on how to make the balustrade and that's going to go around the walkway and uh, I think I have an idea using this mesh so I'll make a piece up and uh, I'll paint it and we'll see what it looks like and if it looks like it's going to work, then we'll use it. But, uh, yeah. It's been a while since we had a proper look at this colliery. Right, I think that's enough. Let's go back to the bench. And this is what I've come up with. And I think with that being painted and glued in place, that would work quite well. Um, all it is, is a wire mesh. I've got two mil card around the top and one mil card around the bottom at the moment. Uh, 0.5 thick this card and it's just super glued in place. Um, it's quite easy to make and it's quite flexible so I've done quite a few measurements um, with both walls so if I show you what it looked like with this wall if I work out how it goes it goes like that so yeah I think that will work So yeah, it's you can buy this stuff anywhere. It's it's quite small the actual um, triangles. It's only about two and a half mil square if you hold it on end. That's all they are, just two and a half mil squares. So you you can pick this up anywhere. So that's the idea. So what I've got to do now is I've cut some little bits of one mil card here to make up the the um, runners as it were or rails all the way around and then I'll paint it and then I've got to do something similar with uh, the stairs running down so that's going to be fun so I just thought I'd show you that right Trying to 
drop them in place hopefully it'll stay there until I get a couple of drops of super glue on it and then super glue across the back so it's going to be a bit fiddly will be worth it in the end so a couple hours later um, this is what I was hoping for and uh, yeah it's all uh, made from card and there's no plastic strip here although you could use plastic strip when you still have to use super glue but uh, I've opted to use card one mil for there two mil across the top one mil in there and 1.5 mil across the top there for the actual handrail so uh, this section is almost ready for painting I've got to keep checking it against the actual walkway itself making sure that they are going to fit so yeah that's nice and flush there and obviously we've got the steps coming up here so hopefully that's going to line up as well I have done a dry run and it does seem like it's all going to fit it's going to be a tight squeeze once the two walls are glued together but uh, they're not ready to glue together yet because I've got these little brackets under here they need to be painted so I shall paint them uh, and paint this edge uh, same colour as whatever the handrail is going to be and then once the handrail is finished then we can um, super glue it to this edge and then we come to the steps the steps are going to be tricky again at the moment the handrail finishes at this top here, this top of the step here, so that finishes there. So we'll have to make a little bit of go from there to there and a handrail that goes down that side as well. Uh, another thing about this mesh, it's so easy to cut. I just use scissors. Because it's only alley. So it is quite easy to cut. Now we move on to the handrail coming from the landing, this landing, down to the base of the stairs. And uh, so I've done my little drawing here. So this represents the landing, that is the floor. So I've taken various measurements um, basically from the top of the landing to the floor and then from the wall out to where the uh, second step finishes and this is what we got so I've done the little landing piece which is quite easy so that just fits in there but also what I've done is when I put the card on here as you can see I have left a ledge there for the mitre to mite up to it Right, so what we've got is here and here is 15 millimeters. So we've gone from the base of the floor to the top of the landing, come on 15 mil, that's already 15 mil. But what we have to do here, we don't cut the piece here at 15 mil. We measure the width across there to give us an idea of the width of mesh that we need and that works out at roughly 11.5 so we've cut our strip here at 11.5 now we mark out our piece of mesh basically I'm just using a sharpie and we just mark a line down there 
marker line down there. Bear in mind we've got two of these to cut. One for this side and one for the other side. And uh, you just about make out the line that I've just drawn. And it's just a case of cutting through the centre of that line. And then do the same over there. Now we have a walkway or the handrail. It's just a case of just super gluing that into there and then add in the card. When we come to do the right angle bends, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So what I've done is I've measured from the toe of this step down to the toe of that step the bottom step and the top step which is roughly about 18 millimeters and uh, then we bend it at a right angle to bring it down the steps if you know what I mean so this is what I've done So here is the right angle mesh. And if I turn it around you can see it's not flat on. So here's the first of our steps. It comes to the landing right on this corner and then it goes up to the next lot of steps. To the top landing which is right at the top here. So let me put it up against the stairs and you can see what I mean. Like so. So when you hold the two meshes together, you can imagine the steps between them. So you're probably wondering, how did I bend it? Well, the simple thing is, I cut this angle first, which is of this angle, but in reverse, so it would have been flat like that. And then I measured 18 mil from that toe to that toe, that toe to that toe, and then got the rule, and then folded it at 90 degrees at that angle, and that's how you get the slant running downwards. And then for that angle, you just put it back on the template, or you use the opposite hand template. And just place them both together, and then just mark it, and then cut it. So you place them so that the diamonds, and, or the, yeah, the diamond shapes if you like, match and then just cut it to suit. Alright so here we are folks we're almost at the end of the video. I've just managed to paint the railings and handrail on the banister so hopefully next week we'll get that glued in to the interior of the booking hall on the verandas. So yeah, we've come a long way this week. We managed to do a fair bit of detail and inside the booking hall, um, which is which is great. I mean, it's it gets fiddly now, uh, as you can see with all the intricate work going on inside. 
but it's easier to do it with the walls in sections as you can agree with me on that I think right so I think that's all from me this week until next time enjoy your model railways bye for now bye